Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Sally Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you whatever I worked on in the craft room this past week. First off, I did finish Robbie's socks. Let's see if I can put a picture here. If you want to see a better picture or one that's not moving around a little, you can go ahead and check it out on Instagram. I took the pictures that you see where it's folded and some where it's opened up, I believe. Those socks, I was working on them on Christmas Eve because I was going to see the kids at 10 a.m. on Christmas Day. And I kept dozing off. It was like 9, 10 o'clock at night. I was just, I was on the ribbing, which is just the last 15 rounds of the sock. And I was just, I was going and then I'd fall asleep. And when I fall asleep and I'm knitting, I tend to go like this with my hands. So I kept pulling the needles out and all those itty bitty stitches on that itty bitty fine yarn. I had to pick them back up late at night with tired eyes. And after the third time I did that, I said, that's it, I'm going to bed. Got up bright and early, 5 a.m. the next day, did my morning routine and then finished those socks and they were all done, ends woven in by 6, 6.30 in the morning. So I was good to go for Christmas day. Robbie loves them, he tried those on, they fit perfectly. So I'm very, very pleased. Something else I finished this week is one of the twin boys, my daughter's godsons. I finished their hat. You see how it has that little detail. I really like how it has that kind of poofy, bumpy detail on the top. And that's just basically, it's a free pattern. It's the bank head pattern. And it has, if you go down below into my, where do I do this at? Ralvery, you'll see a link to all of this. But it's, since it's a free pattern, I can easily tell you, you knit four stitches in purl one, and the purl makes it dip down like that. And that's how you do the cuff, the ribbing on the cuffs too. When you're knitting, you do some form of knit and purl. This one is a knit one through the back loop and purl. And I like that for the cuff because it kind of gives it that nice tight thing. And you can't see, a lot of times when you do a knit two purl two, those purl two will kind of open up and it won't have as much stretch to it. So I really like this for a hat. And with that little, that one little pearl, every four stitches on the fifth stitch around, it's going to make it stretch so that it's going to fit the boys' hats, heads for a little while longer. This is where I was. Remember I told you I was worried about changing colors? Well, I forgot that this pattern decreases pretty rapidly. So I just have the little oranges on top. These two oranges here, I didn't even have to worry about getting into the pink. So that was really nice. I think that little bit of a bullseye on top is not too bad. I am thinking about making, oh, I need to fix that stitch. So you got a little bit of a wobble there on one of the pearls. That's okay. When I weave, did I weave in the end? Nope. When I weave in the end, you can always take your end like this and you can just grab that stitch and I can just pull it down to the back. And it's kind of just, it's a little bit of a fuzzy stitch. And since it's the pearl, it's sitting on top. So that's the only reason it sticks up. I can always easily pull that to the back and you won't even see it. But yeah, I'm thinking about putting a pom-pom on, but a removable one. So one, they can wash the hats. And two, if the boys or the mama doesn't like the pom-poms, she'll be able to take it off and either throw it away, save it for later, you know, put it back on after the hat's washed, whatever. So that is the first hat for one boy. And the second one, and I'm not picking which boys these go to, they can share them or change them different ones. I'm using red heart for this one and I've got red heart neon stripes for this one. And this time it's striping up like this. So I think this one's coming along really nicely too. It, it seems to be doing a row and a half of a color, and then it seems to be doing a row and a half, possibly, let's see, no, row and a half of the color and a row and a half of the black. And that's just based on the fact that I am doing, this is a bank head again. You can see right there where it has that little pearl stitch. And for the boy's size, I'm making a, for a small adult or a child, and you cast on 80 stitches. I am using size six needles where the pattern calls for seven. I found from trial and error that the seven for me is a little bit too loose and I like the the I like the fabric that's coming out and how it's more the stitches are closer together when I use a six. It's a little bit tighter, so it'll keep their heads a little bit warmer. But that's why I'm getting a round and a half. And I bet you if I did it for more of a normal adult size, it would just be round of black and around a color. So that's why this one here looks kind of nice and normal. 
But when we get over to this side, it has these weird jagged things. And that's because it's only the one row of knit one, purl one that makes it look like that. But it's fine. It just looks a little bit different in a couple spots. But once I get into the regular part of the hat, it just kind of follows around. You got your two colors. So you basically can put it in the front like this with the two colors. And you can put the one color in the back if you were particular. Let's face it, three-year-old boys are not going to care. They're just going to want a hat on. And that's why I think that they're going to enjoy a pom-pom. So there'll be plenty of this yarn left over. I don't have to worry about where I'm ending or anything. So I'll go ahead and make pom-pom for each of them and then let mama decide. And since we are past the holidays and I can get back into my normal routine, I have picked up my dishcloths again to work on for just those few minutes here and there. I worked on it a little bit today when I had my morning smoothie. When I have a, a smoothie for breakfast each morning, I have it after I shower and when I'm into the shop and I'm just kind of in my craft room sitting around just getting ready for my day and thinking about what's going on. So instead of like chugging down a freezing cold thick smoothie in just minutes, I take a little project like this and knit on it or I might check something on the computer and it's just a nice easy way, 20-30 minutes to start into my day. I don't know about you guys, but when I get between Christmas and New Year's, you're leading up to Christmas for so long. You're like, oh my gosh, I've got these deadlines. I have to have these things done. What am I going to do? So that when Christmas comes, even if you're like me where you have some things left over, you kind of feel lost between Christmas and New Year's where it's like, oh, okay, well, Robbie's socks are done. I met all those deadlines. Christmas presents are done. What am I going to work on now? So while I still have some knitting projects that need to be worked on, I told you I have some gifts for friends that I want to work on still, I decided to go ahead and just give myself a little bit of space to work on those things as of the first little, because the first, I mean, it's only seven days away from Christmas, so it's not like I'm waiting weeks and weeks. I think seven more days. People don't know what they're getting for a gift anyway, so it'll be a big, big surprise in January, right? I pulled out this block. It was some type of a, a quilt shop a block of the month that you could do if you like hop from quilt shop to quilt shop and you get your different blocks or something like that. But this was a cardinal, so I just picked this one up from Miranda. I got everything fused down. This is a 13 inch block and you're supposed to trim it down to 12 and a half inches. But now that I'm looking at it, I just realized that since I'm not trimming it down and I'm leaving it as is, I have a tree issue here. There's nothing there. So I might have to think on that a little bit and see. I might actually have some of this brown. I might have some left over from what they gave me. And if not, I, I, I'll come up with something. Either, I don't know. Maybe I'll put a cloud up there or something. I really like the cloud background, but I can always add a little something up there work this down to where maybe it comes off into another branch and just kind of works up or something like that. Or worse comes to worse, I can just go ahead and trim off that top part and it won't look like a tree just kind of ended in space. Now I know trees do have to end, but this one seems a little bit thick up there, like it ended a little bit too abruptly. Or I could have this totally, no, it's not backwards because the bird has to face, the bird is meant to face here. so. Whatever, I'll figure it out. Now my next step to think of first is how I'm going to go ahead and applique all this down. Now I could just easily do a match the colors and just do a stitch, a straight stitch all around everywhere. I could do a buttonhole, but I wanna make sure is here that this is the wing that's appliqued on top. And I wanna make sure I define that out. So I'm gonna to talk to my daughter since it's for her and she's very, very particular and knows what she likes and doesn't like. I'm gonna show her examples of where someone takes a black thread and just outlines it like those ones that are very cartoony to where you just kind of either go around once or twice or make a little bit of a thicker stitch and outline everything so it's noticeable. Of course, I would still stick with the white on here. I wouldn't wanna have that sticking out like that. But just something on the bird I have to look, I think I have a darker, I know I have a darker red thread, I just haven't laid it on here to see if it'll stand out yet. Otherwise I might need to go with a lighter color just to get this wing to pop and give it some dimension. Then I'm not sure what I wanna do for the quilting. 
if I was just making this for myself or something, I probably would have quilted the background first and then added all these on or just use whatever stitch I put on here to be considered my quilting stitch. 13 inches, 13 and a half inches, it's not going to need more quilting than just what gets around here. So I have to see what I'm going to use for my backing and make those decisions. Maybe I'll add just a little hand quilting. Just a little, maybe outline a couple of the clouds somewhere or put a, the, the what is it, um, an outline stitch just outside of all of these things to give it that little extra, I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. Miranda hasn't decided exactly how she wants it finished. She says she wants some type of a binding, but maybe not a border. So based on what she's pointed out from what's hanging on my walls, I think she wants to have binding on it so that it shows in the front as a nice frame to the quilt. And then I have to put something on it so that she can hang it. I think I'm gonna stick with those little triangles that you put on the back so she can hang it up on a little dowel rod or something like that. Yeah, so that's where that's at. So we're gonna work on it a little bit. Haven't decided 100% yet, but she's not in any rush. I really don't think she wants to worry about hanging it up where she's at right now anyway. The other sewing I did is I finally pulled out, I know it doesn't look like sewing, right? But this is my binder that I'm using for the block of the month that we're working on with Margaret Lewin. So I finally pulled it out and I've got a few of the blocks done. And what I'm doing is I am decided to make the six inch blocks and I'm just storing them right inside here. You can't see the, all the directions are underneath there. These are all basic blocks or as far as I can see anyway, so they're already out there on the internet, but I don't wanna give out any of the information. I'm sure you understand. But we had the option that when it first came out, it was gonna be a 15 inch square and it was like a jumbo queen size. It was a queen size, but a little bit bigger maybe, but not yet a king size quilt. And I have a twin bed and the biggest bed I plan on ever getting, and I don't plan on getting rid of my twin, would be a double because I don't need a large bed and I don't want a large bed because all it does is take up space in your room, right? So I decided when they came out with the six inch square, I thought, oh, that's perfect. It's for a baby quilt. Well, I'm gonna do the six inch squares and then that way I can make some extra and just turn it into a lapgan and then I could use it throughout the year and just pull it out when, because even in the summer when the air conditioning is down pretty low, it does get cool in the house on certain nights, especially on a rainy day. So I can have something like that out. I can hang it up on the wall, drape it over the couch, whatever. So I decided to go ahead and do the six inch squares. I learned really quick that a 15 inch block is great because all these pieces are huge. But when you take that same block and you shrink it down to a six inch square, these pieces get pretty small. Some of the pieces I worked on so far, they're about, I've worked on two inches, two and a half, and one and three quarter inch. That's crazy. So let me show you the blocks I've done. Block one, as you were seeing, is the Old Maid's Puzzle. Now I was planning on recording while I made these blocks and stuff like that and have videos coming up, but I'm 12 blocks behind. So I thought, well, let me see if I can just knock all these out. And then if I can in the future, I'll go ahead. I can't actually show you how to make the blocks anyways because it's a purchase pattern. So I don't know, I think I'm just gonna show you these as I go along. Maybe I'll make a separate video just for these so that anyone who's been making it and following along, if they wanna see them, they can for whatever reason. Each of these blocks come with a little history. So I think that's what I might do because I wanted to read the history for each block as I went. So after this week, I think I even this week's ones, I might just go ahead and film a separate video so that I can read the history off for each one and then we can see them as they go. But this week I wanted to show you guys because well, I don't have too much else to show anyway and this is what I worked on on Sunday. Block 11 was also an old maid's puzzle, but we did a different. While this one has our our peachy pink colors, this is, this is one fabric and this is another. So it has three fabrics in there. This one we brought in new colors. So we actually have the one, two, and the three colors. So it changes it up. Even though you can see these triangles here, it does change up how it looks when you change out that color. So I thought that was really nice. Block seven was the Irish chain. I'm not sure, maybe block seven is where it's placed in the quilt because it's the third block we're doing. 
So I did the Irish chain. This is the one that had the teeny, teeny, tiny bitsy pieces. Now these were all supposed to come out at six and a half inches before they go in, you know, unfinished. And these are close. This one is six and a half. This one is six and a half plus an eighth. So that's six and five eighths. This one, I, cause it said to use a scant quarter inch. So I did that on all of these and this one ended up being a little bit bigger than six and a half inches. So I need to just, I want to line up a, my ruler on here and just trim a little bit off so that they're all the same. But I decided that I'm not going to worry about trimming any of my blocks until they're all done. So in case something is, in case something is a little bit smaller, I don't want to have, I don't want to trim these a six and a half and find out that the next nine blocks are six and a quarter and they need to be trimmed again. So I'm just gonna leave them as is. And I thought it was really good. So I did really well practicing on that scant quarter inch. I didn't get all of my little points to line up exactly perfectly, but with a six and a half inch block, when you put that into the quilt, you're not gonna see that that one is off just by that little hair of a thread of a smidgen. But most of these, all the points lined up really well. I did end up using a stiletto to feed everything through the machine nicely. I'll have to admit that I didn't use pins because I thought with the small blocks, I'd be able to just hold it and get it together. But obviously I was off by just a smidge here and there. So on my next blocks, I'll go ahead and use pins. As I said, with little blocks that small, with so many small pieces, if it was a six and a half inch block and there was only like four pieces, you're gonna see it. But since they all have like 16 pieces, you're not gonna exactly see all those little bits. Plus I figured out that I had to press some seams to the dark side. I had to press some seams open. It was a good trial and error to figure things out. One of the projects that I wanted to work on, it was, this was going to be my Christmas, what was I gonna do? So I was gonna do this on Christmas day. On Christmas Eve, I was gonna work on those block of the months. But since I was too busy doing the socks, I pulled this out recently. Since then, I got the bird brain designs. This is a Santa Claus door stopper. The pattern was sent to me. Thank you so much. And this is the one that came with the Santa Claus one, uh, the snowman one. And we voted which one to do first. And we decided the snowman because we all knew that I wasn't going to get the Santa Claus finished in time for Christmas. And boy, were we right. I got the embroidery done for the snowman, but it still needs to be turned into a wall hanging. So I went ahead and I started working on this and then I, I actually had purchased white fabric for the background because I thought this is muslin. I did the snowman on muslin, but I, I wanted to try white. So I picked up this white. Can you see how it's a tone on tone with all the different designs on it? I'd already pressed the, the interfacing to the back of it. And then I went to go ahead and trace out the design and all I could see whether I put it on a light box or up to the window or however I tried to trace it, I can only see the kind of like, it's not embossed, but that's what it feels like. I can only see like this lacy work on top of it and I could not see the design through it no matter what, even when I made the outlines darker. So I went through my stash because I wasn't gonna go back to the store. I figured there's gotta be something that I have. This is a fat quarter that I picked up at the Dollar Tree actually. So I went ahead and I traced it out on this. And at first I took a little snippet off of it and I soaked it really wet and I set it down on top of a white towel and I kind of rubbed it vigorously and I checked it really good to make sure that it wasn't going to bleed. Now, will this still run afterwards? I'm sure it could possibly and it might do it. And my pretty white stitches might turn pink, but that's the chances you take. This is going to be a wall hanging, so hopefully it shouldn't need to be washed very much. I hit it with a lot of steam. None of the ink transferred the, the dye from the fabric, so I should be okay. But I have him all traced out. I used a micron pen, so it's all traced out in black. And I got just the start of the hat with the little bells on it. After I'd spent all that time tracing it out, because for a project this large, you figure this is a fat quarter, so this, I believe, this looks like it might be the 22 inch side, could be the 18, but it, it takes up from, from here to here. So it fills up the whole length of it this way and most of the width. There's a lot of little details on this. 
with all his little toys. So this is definitely going to be a long-term project, but it is a good goal to set to get this done to hang up for Christmas this year, well, 2020, next year coming up. And that was all that I worked on in the craft room. And on top of that, I had worked on different things in the house. I've got Christmas all put away. I did a little after Christmas shopping with my son, Justin. We went up to Target because they had their Christmas tubs on clearance. Well, yeah, on clearance of where they were like 50% off. And it, it didn't mark them down very much. I think I probably saved, I don't, they must not have been 50% off because I think I only saved like a dollar on them. But they were only $5 for the tubs. And so I picked a couple of them up for storing all the Christmas stuff. So Christmas has gotten put away. And as far as I can tell, most of the time, a week or so after Christmas, I find that one little decoration that's sitting somewhere or an ornament goes stuck on the tree, something sitting on a shelf. So, so far I haven't seen any Christmas that I've left laying around. I've gone around and searched the house and I think I've done pretty good this time. So Christmas is put away and then I went through most of it. I got rid of like a lot of the kids old I saved the ones where they traced their hands and made Santa Clauses out of it because you can make the little hat up here with the little uh, pom-pom coming off of it. So I saved things like that because it's the shape of their hand from when they were like five. So that's sweet. But most of the things that they just created with little puffy things on it and stuff like that, cotton balls, I got rid of all that. It's, it's let's see, Robbie's turning 21 in a few months. So there's it's time to go. Justin is going to be 32 this year coming up. I don't need to be saving things that are that old. I want to show you a really beautiful fabric postcard that I received in the mail. Nice little red bird on there. Now, if you, if you look carefully, you'll see that this is just the regular fabric that had the bird and the tree and the design on it. And this person was just really creative and added some stitches and added some extra little... I'm not really sure what this is. This is some type of a ribbon or twill or something like that. Fold it over fabric, extra stitches just added everywhere. And that's how you can take just a basic card like this piece of fabric and bring it up a couple notches. So if you don't have, if you're like, I'm not very creative, I don't know how to design a card, you can just take pieces of fabric like this and add to it. You can add some buttons or beads or just embroidery stitches on top and just bring it up a couple notches. So this is a really pretty card. And speaking of cards, now I know I've said in the past that if you guys send me postcards, that I will send you, you know, a regular standard postcard that I'll send you a Florida postcard in return. And for the beginning of the year, I think I did reasonably well. I'm sure a couple people slipped through on me and I didn't quite catch them all. But between taking care of Rob and then dealing with everything afterwards, I have to admit that I've really, I, I've dropped the ball. So if you have sent me a regular postcard and you were hoping to get a Florida postcard in return, can you please just send me your name and address to my RLS Island Crafts at gmail.com email address is down below in the description and i'll get a postcard right out to you if you were just sending them to so that i can see what's going on and all the cool things that are happening around the world in the different places thank you so much i still haven't figured out exactly how i can store them and display them besides just a simple three ring binder i, I want to come up with something a little bit more creative or at least expand on it so it looks nicer than just having one of these filled with postcards. And speaking of postcards, I got one from Tarpon Springs, Florida. That's just a few hours north of me. I think it ends up being like two and a half, three hour drive uh, north of me. And what this is, is Tarpon Springs is the sponge capital of the world. So these are all sponges. So isn't that kind of cool? I. I you don't always think about it, but they actually have to harvest sponges. They grow sponges, have, harvest sponges, just get them from the, the Gulf or the ocean or whatever. And then that's how you purchase natural sponges. Now, of course, a lot of the ones we clean with in the kitchen are just uh, synthetic. So they're just made out of whatever, probably some type of plastic material, I'm sure. My daughter Miranda and I stopped at the post office Christmas Day. And we found one of these. This was in one of the packages that were in there. And as soon as I opened this, the first thing I thought of was the sandcastles when I did the live stream on Fort Myers Beach. It's all decked out for Christmas, but yet it's a Florida beachy, however you want to look at it, anywhere Hawaii. 
the countries that have Christmas during the summertime and stuff, there's a, a sand Christmas tree and stuff like this. Now to this person, I want to say thank you very much. I have sent out a thank you card in the mail to you. I did not see a way to contact you. I haven't, I don't know everyone's, the names that they use to post comments versus their real names. Some people do have their real names and other people like me have RS Island Crafts or something. So I couldn't find a comment to thank you on or to send an email to. So I went ahead and I sent you a thank you card, but I wanted you to know that it did arrive safely and that I love it. I'm going to make some type of a project bag with this, I'm sure, or a couple other things because there's plenty of fabric here to do that. There's even a blue crab down there. And this leads me to one more thing before we finish off for today. When we checked the P.O. box, there was one, they, they have these yellow card things like, and inside it had my post office number on it. So that means you take that card up to the desk and then they give you a package for it because either the package is too big to fit into or your post office box is full. I only have one that's about the size of a shoe box. So they can fit a lot of cards and stuff in it. But when there's a larger package, anything bigger than a priority mail envelope, they either put it in a locked larger P.O. box that you just go to, you know, you get a key in the box. If anyone has a P.O. box, you know how it goes. You get a key, you open up another P.O. box and you take your box out where that's how I got some of the packages. Now, but the other one, it said that there was a package behind the counter. So Miranda went to pick it up on Friday after work when the post office was open because the post office is quarter mile, half mile from our house. It's really easy for her to just stop by and grab things for me and then get them to me eventually. So that right now dealing with everything, I don't have to go all the way over there. But the lady behind the counter could not find a package to go with that card because it just says your your post office box number on it. It doesn't tell you what day it got there, who it's from, or anything like that. So if you have sent me a package, first, thank you so much. I really appreciate anything when you guys send them in the mail. But if you send a package and I haven't thanked you for it, except for the person from this fabric right here because you know that this has arrived safely. If you send a package and you haven't heard from me, could you please send me an email? at the rsislandcrafts at gmail.com from down below. And if you have a tracking number, that would help us find the package. They're supposed to be searching for it over the weekend. And if they come across it, they're gonna go ahead and put it back into my PO box. But right now, without a tracking number, they're having a hard time finding it. Many times I've had to come back later and get it, and they found it back into the corner somewhere. But usually when there's a tracking number, there's, I guess, something in their system will say it's under this table or in this locker or this bay or whatever. But right now they don't know where it is. So just please let me know if you have the tracking number or if it's from you so that we can make it a little bit easier to find that package. Because otherwise it's just going to sit there in limbo. And, and I want to thank you for it. And I really appreciate when you send it, but I, I can't I can't get it right now. So on that confusing note, that's all I have this week. A little update for my drama. I believe my washing machine is officially uh, dead. It's the strangest thing. It goes through its cycles and I've gotten it to where it can fill up with water and stuff, but it doesn't actually, I think it's maybe it's not agitating or something because it's not actually washing my clothes. Some of the clothes are still coming out dry even though they've been in the water. So I tested the levels and stuff, but it's hard. This is a washing machine where it senses your clothes, it weighs it and it feels it and it measures how high they are up. And then it puts your water to a certain level, like a half an inch above the line of your clothes. So it's a special water saver. Now I believe in saving the planet and being a water saver, keeping on short cycles and everything, but I've had no luck with water saving things. The water saving shower, just comes out as a trickle you have no water pressure so good luck washing your hair a water saving toilet you end up flushing it two or three times to get even a simple thing like toilet paper to go down so you're not saving any water there and my washing machine good thing my clothes are not actually dirty because it would not fill up all the way and wash them now i was reminded about how old this washing machine is and robbie remembered it back in the middle school so it's over eight years old and they recommend anytime over eight years it's time to replace your washing machine anyways when you start having problems because these are the newer ones that a lot of times to have them fixed and repaired either it can't be done because when a part breaks it's a throwaway part or it costs more to fix it i've done everything that is possible 
I thought about calling in a technician and having them look at it, but then I thought I was just throwing extra money away because they're either going to fix it and then the washing machine is going to have other problems possibly, or they're going to say, hey, you need a new washing machine. So instead of basically wasting that money, I'm just going to go ahead while they have a really good deal at Lowe's for washing machines right now, I just go ahead and pick one up in the next week or so. And until then, there's laundromats nearby. I've got the kids' house and everything. It's just me and the animals. I don't have to do laundry that often. I think that was the only drama. I found a new place to take the car up to get a diagnostic run. That should be doing going up this week to take care of that. Because I don't want to just go with what the dealership said because I've had a few messages and I've talked to a couple different people locally. And I just want to make sure that you know, second opinion, just like when you go to a doctor, let's get a second opinion before we spend 1600 plus dollars on something that may not necessarily be wrong with it or need to be fixed. We have run the VIN number to make sure there's no other recalls, so there's no other hidden recalls that we don't know about. And I'll be taking it up to a, I believe it's a Swift Lube. It's somewhere we've been taking our cars to do oil changes and air conditioners and tire stuff for years and years and years. The people there are very trustworthy. A lot of times I go in and I have things done and they're like, you know, Robin, you've been coming here for 10 years. There's no charge. They have put patches on my tires. They've checked my brakes and they're very honest with us. They say, okay, we changed your oil. Now you haven't had your radiator oil, radiator fluids changed in a certain amount of time. You're okay for now, but within the next six months, you should have this taken care of. Or your transmission fluid is getting to that point. It's just starting to get a little bit dirty. You have six months before you need to check this. Or when they tell me you need to change your transmission fluid, I know that they're treating me honestly and that I need to take care of it. So I'm going to take the car up to there, let them run the diagnostic, and they will tell me exactly. They won't just say your car is safe, your car is unsafe, or you have to do this or what. They'll tell me what needs to be done, what can be waited on, and they'll explain to me what those parts do so that I know whether or not it's safe for me to drive the car two miles or it's unsafe for me to drive the car 20 miles or just leave it parked until I can get it fixed type situation. So slow process, but I'm gonna go step by step. I'm gonna make sure that the money that I use and put into things is going to a worthwhile cause and I'm not just throwing money away because I don't wanna just throw money at the washing machine. Rob and I knew the washing machine used to be quiet then all of a sudden when it got on the spin cycle, it sounded like a jet plane. I mean, when we first heard it, we all ran out there because we thought it was gonna be jumping around the garage or something like that. So that was one of the first signs that we knew there's something going on, not sure exactly what it is. So I think in the long run, I'd rather not put any more money into fixing the washing machine for it to go ahead and break down later on this year or even next week, because who knows what might happen, right? At least that's the theory I'm going on right now. So thanks for hanging out with me again this week, guys, and I hope you're starting to work on some new projects. Is anyone starting anything new for the beginning of the year? I do want to, I, I'm going to work on what I have already. I'm not gonna start anything new. Once I start finishing a couple other things, I'm really dying to start knitting a sweater. And I know chances are I'm gonna get this sweater done and it's going to be into spring, but that's okay, because then I'll have it for next year. I have a couple other things that are gonna keep me warm, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.